Hello, good morning. My name's Jackie Holderness and I am going to read you from this book that I was very privileged to be able to write. It's the story of the patron saint of Oxford, Saint Frideswide. And she was the princess here in Anglo-Saxon times. And so I've called the book, The Princess Who Hid in a Tree. And you'll find out why as we read the story together. The pictures were painted by a wonderful illustrator called Alan Marks, with whom I was very privileged to be able to collaborate on this story. So we're all living in a sort of lockdown at the moment, but um, you'll see that Princess Frideswide also had a sort of lockdown in her life and came through it uh, successfully. Long, long ago, starts the story, it's an Anglo-Saxon story, on the banks of the River Thames, there lived a Saxon king called Didon and his fair queen, Saffreda. They were very proud of their only child, a daughter named Frideswide. Her name meant strong peace, and indeed she was very strong and peaceful and brave. She loved to climb trees, row boats and paddle in the shallow river. Everyone agreed she was a kind and gentle child. She worked hard and learned to read and write while very young. When she wasn't climbing trees, she played music and sang like an angel. But best of all, she loved climbing trees. And that's the River Thames in the background. After a while, news about Frideswide's beauty and kindness reached the princes and kings of nearby kingdoms. But Frideswide told her father she did not plan to marry. Instead, she wanted to build a church beside the River Thames where the lumbering oxen crossed a shallow ford. So Frideswide and her father began to build a priory as a place of welcome in a meadow by the river. There, Frideswide and her friends would care for the poor, sick and lonely people who came to them for help. But one day, a message arrived from a nearby kingdom. Algar, the king of Mercia, said he was going to marry Frideswide. He threatened that if she refused him, he would attack Oxford and kidnap her by force. His soldiers were already on their way. Frideswide and her mother were, and father were very worried. I have an idea, said Frideswide's dearest friend, Hilla. We could use the river to escape by boat. We could hide in the woods at Binsey, where there are many briars and thorn trees. King Algar's soldiers will never find us there. Here you can see the princess getting into a disguise to run away to safety. As the sun began to set, Frideswide and her friends, Hilla and Alwyn, rode along a stream now the colour of midnight to a remote spot deep in the thorny forest. Once inside the tangled woods, the women hid their boat and found shelter in an old barn, home to some animals wintering in the forest. It was hardly the place for a princess, but it was dry. The animals made the women welcome and kept them warm. But next morning, Frideswide woke in terror to hear Algar and his men with their dogs crashing through the wood, shouting, find the princess, find her. The women hid under the animal's straw, trembling with fear and praying the soldiers would not find them. At last, the sound of tramping feet and fierce barking gradually faded away. The next day dawned bright and clear. The women wanted to stay in their shelter, but they had no clear water to drink. With a prayer and a song, Frideswide struck her staff onto the ground. To the women's amazement, a clear, pure stream bubbled up. Alwyn tasted the crystal water. It was delicious and seemed to glow inside her. But a few days later, 
Without warning, Algar's men came back, hacking their way into the forest. Quick, shh, whispered the princess, climb into the trees. The three women hid themselves in the branches. They held their breath. The puzzled soldiers could not find them and had to tell a furious Prince Algar, King Algar, that the princess had completely disappeared. Hilla said, we need to find a safer place to hide. Let's use the river again and row all night. We can hide in the daytime. Si silently, all night then, they sped through the darkness, through curtains of weeping willow, until their hands and arms were sore from rowing. Eventually, the friends found a farm by the river. The women were helped ashore by the kindly farmer's wife. You may stay with us for as long as you need, she promised with a smile. We think that might be a farm near Yattenden in Berkshire. After several months, it seemed safe to return to the Thornwood at Binsey, where the trees had saved their lives. In that peaceful setting, the holy spring of water had made a pool on the forest floor. The water was so clear the women could see their reflections in it. Frideswide decided they should stay and build a little chapel. The women built a wall around the spring to make a well and it soon became known as a place of blessing and healing. As soon as the people heard their beloved princess had returned to Binsey, they came to help her. They made sure that the princess and her women had enough to eat. And they came to see the well and the water, which gave them hope and comfort. Along the winding lane, worried mothers brought their sick children to the princess. With them came the blind and the lame and people with leprosy to be blessed by Frideswide's prayers. Both rich and poor came to be sprinkled with the blessed water, dark and as treacle inside the well, but pure and sparkling in the light. Frideswide and her friends stayed in the forest for many months and they thought they were safe. But King Algar had sent out his spies to look for the princess he was still determined to marry her, and he was mean and cruel and ruled his kingdom by fear and force. You need to be very sharp-eyed to spot the spy hiding behind the tree. Algar was not going to stand for any nonsense this time. With an angry shout, he mounted his great war horse and set off on the road to Oxford, followed by his fiercest soldiers. On his way to the woods at Binsey, a cattle drover saw the soldiers marching in a cloud of dust towards the river. He ran to warn the princess. My lady, he puffed, King Algar has discovered your hiding place. He is attacking from the west. You must go into Oxford at once. So they ran along the road to the town. Once the princess and her companions were through the gates, the watchman slammed them shut. Everyone's heart was pounding with terror, but Frideswide was not afraid. The king's soldiers battered at the gates until the wood splintered and fell to the ground. Algar jumped to walk down from his horse and strode angrily towards the princess. But just as he was about to step through the gateway, Frideswide looked towards heaven and moved her lips in prayer. Suddenly, as Algar moved to seize the princess, the sky grew dark. 
there was a deafening crash of thunder and from above came a dazzling bolt of lightning. Everybody felt its heat and Algar's soldiers held their breath. With a great cry, Algar fell to his knees, his head in his hands. I cannot see, he wailed. I am blind. Be careful, warned Alwyn. This could be a trick. But Frideswide spoke gently and held out her hand. Do not be afraid. Open your eyes. It is safe now. To everyone's amazement, Algar's sight cleared. Through his tears, he babbled his thanks and promised never to bother the princess again. King Algar, she said calmly, I have been saved from you and you have been saved from doing wrong. Return to your kingdom and leave me and my people here in peace. Forgive me, dear lady, said Algar. I have learned a valuable lesson. True peace can be even stronger than kings and soldiers and armies. I bid you and your friends farewell. So, no longer would the princess have to run away or hide in trees. She could carry on building her church beside the River Thames for the people of Oxford. And it is still there today. And it's called Christ Church Cathedral. And I hope after this lockdown, you and your families will come to visit the cathedral. It is built for the people of Oxford and it's free to visit if you live in, as a citizen of Oxford near the city centre. All right, so thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the story. Bye-bye.